So hi, I'm Manja. I'm um, the artist of Belmarsh Life and we are here in front of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg for today, tomorrow and for Thursday. And we try to reach as many MPs and people of course on the street as well to go into the recreation of Julian's cell in Belmarsh. It's the original size, it's the original sound and we want my, uh, people to feel what it is like to be in solitary confinement for four and a half years. Of course, no one can feel what Julian is going through, really, but we want to give a glimpse of it and raise as much awareness in this very critical situation Julian is right now facing so that we can get him out now because um, sometimes I feel really helpless these days because I don't know what to do anymore and um, this is my artistic and creative way of raising the awareness for it. Manu, why do you think so few people show up sometimes? Why do you think it's so hard to break out of this bubble of uh, Assange supporters who already know who he is and what he's done and what he stands for? One of the biggest problems is of course the mainstream media who, um, if they not offend Julian, they don't say anything about him and about his current situation. They want us to forget about him and this is what we see on the streets on a daily basis that people sometimes ask who is Julian Assange and how you can forget the hero of our time. And Stella once said after a court hearing that every generation has a epic fight, a fight to fight and Julian is our fight and people need to understand this and it's very hard when they don't know about him when, and that's why we are here you know it's hard because the mainstream media and the politicians don't get behind him as they should. Can you just name some of the cities that you've been in over the years with this Belmarsh Live exhibit? So we are now since exactly a year on the streets and we are very often in Berlin. We was in Frankfurt, we was in Cologne, we was in Rostock, um, now here in Strasbourg and countless little cities in Germany where we supported the local literature groups and with our appearance there. Free Julian. Free Julian Assange. What I want to do is record a message. Can I do that? Um, I want to do one to send out on social media. So. Okay. So, uh, I want to do it outside or inside. Okay. It's outside the Council of Europe, almost uh, in sight of the European Court of Human Rights. Julian has spent years in a maximum security prison in Britain, known as Belmarsh. I visited him two weeks ago. What an eye opener. Maximum security prison. Lots of searches on the way in. Lots of checks on the way in. And then we had some time, Len McCluskey and myself, talking to Julian about the injustice of his case. What is Julian accused of? He's accused under the Espionage Act of the United States. And if he's extradited to the USA, will face more than a century in prison basically a death sentence. Julian's only crime has been to tell the truth. To tell the truth about what went on in Abu Ghraib. Tell the truth about Afghanistan. Tell the truth about global corporations destroying the natural world and environment. Tell the truth about the skullduggery of all governments around the world. He's a journalist who spoke the truth for three years. If he ends up being deported, if he ends up with a death sentence in prison, every other journalist around the world will be slightly more reluctant to ever publish difficult stories. We want our journalists to be free to publish the difficult stories. So free Julian Assange. What happens when WikiLeaks runs into the United Kingdom, which has 
some of the most draconian secrecy laws in the world, such as the Official Secrets Act. We haven't found a, a problem publishing uh, UK information. I mean, when we look at the Official Secrets Act label documents, um, we see they state that it is an offence to retain the information and it is an offence to destroy the information. So the only possible outcome is that we have to publish the information. <laughs> um, and that's what which we have done on, on many, many occasions. I, I noticed one that I uh, had a, a personal interest in was one that uh, from the Ministry of Defence classified document that um, equated uh, terrorists with investigative journalists as threats. And Russian spies. And Russian spies. Yeah, as, as in fact, in many sections of that report, investigative journalists are the number one uh, threat to the sort of information security uh, of the Minist Ministry of Defence. That was a 2,000-page a document on how to stop leaks uh, from the Ministry of Defence, which, which we leaked. I didn't know whether to be uh, offended or honoured. Well, it's nice, nice to be having a, an, an impact. 